This is a day that the Lord has made. We shall be glad and rejoice in it. And thank you again for being with us tonight with the Mount Marine Baptist Church Tuesday night um, Bible study. So tonight we're going to be studying um, 2 Timothy, and we're going to start in chapter um, 2. We're not going to complete the entire chapter um, on tonight. I believe we're going to um, st stop right at about verse um, 12. So let's have a word of prayer before we get started. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for just being so gracious and, and kind um, to us throughout last week and also on, on this day. Because truly, Lord God, this is the day that you have made, and we shall be glad and rejoice in it, oh, oh God. Now, Father, I pray, God, that you will just open up the hearts and the minds of your people, Lord God, so that they may um, see, Lord God, that which you have um, placed before them on today. So bless them, Lord God, as only you can. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Okay, so so we're going to get started here. So, so so last week, we learned the intent of the Apostle Paul's letter that he wrote to Timothy. And this is the second letter that Paul writes to this um, this young pastor um, by the name of Tim Timothy. So, so so the intent of the letter is is for Timothy to, um, to get reengaged to the ministry by reminding him to stir up his gift and i believe that we all have a gift and then sometimes you know the gift it just it just dies out because you know life happens right and then sometimes we just need someone to just encourage us you know with the word just tell us hey come on now get get, get yourself together um you know you can do this thing you're you're, you're much better um than that and also um he was telling him to reignite um, these gifts. So, so, so Paul calls Timothy, and this is the intent of the entire letter. He's calling Timothy to take his place in the front line as a, a front line of the of the Christian ministry as a good soldier. Okay, remember that term because Paul uses um, military um, um, vernacular when he's writing to uh, to Timothy. Okay, so so Paul Paul. He, he wants Timothy to be that to be that conduit that leak between the generations, whether they're older or the younger generation. He wants to train the evangelists and also the teachers of um, the future. And this is the intent that Paul um, writes to Timothy. So so let's pick up in um, verse verse one. So so Paul says in verse one of chapter two, and in, in, and this is where we landed last week. Paul says. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. And and see, and some folk don't reach for the hand of God until everything is out of out of control because they're trying to do things um on their own own strength. But but Paul says you have to be strong in the grace of Jesus Christ, but not strong in the grace of your own accord, um, because the Bible says that not by might nor by power, but by but by the by the Spirit of the Living God. And if we're not being, especially when it comes to um, doing ministry, if we're not being um, led by the Spirit, then 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 then, then it really doesn't really t um, reach the you know the depths of the people. You know their hurts and their and their pains. You know their 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 doubts and their. In, in their fears, and, and, and God will always um, give us um, exactly, you know, what the people really um, need uh, to hear. So, so picking up in verse two, Paul says, "And of what?" So here's the second piece. He says, um, he says also, he says, he says, "Be strong, be strong in the grace of Jesus Christ, but also be strong through what." I have taught you. Paul says, I have taught you uh, many, you know, many things. So, so Paul says, what you have heard from me in the presence of many, what witnesses, he says, he says, be strong in the word, be strong in the word of God, be strong in the power uh, of God. But here's the second piece that Paul um, writes, because Paul says, um, you heard me say this in the in the presence of many witnesses. He says, "Be careful, because you have to entrust what I have taught you to faithful men who are able to teach." Also, so here's so here's a criteria that Paul, you you know, he puts out there. To Paul, Paul puts out there because Timothy has the responsibility to teach. Um, the current generation and also that next generation from the lessons that he learned from um, Paul. 
Right. And I just believe that, you know, that, that many of you have learned from people that that have been sitting in the pews in the pulpit, but also in your homes. Right. People, you know, they they, they not only taught you the word of God um, in the church. But, you know, but your family members, your grandmother, your mother, your father, your grandfather, you know, they gave you these biblical lessons learned. So t Timothy, he's, he's instructed to place men and women in his circle that he could um, trust. And see, and that's the problem that many people um, face in the ministry, right? F you know, because, see, really you want people that you can trust in in the ministry you just don't want you just don't want someone just because you know they are they are gifted right because you can be gifted but not trustworthy right because because if you're not trustworthy then you're liable just to do anything right you may just go up in the pope and just do whatever you want to do and not tell anybody about what your plans are or what your plans um were so P P paul he, he gives timothy a warning he says timothy he says first of all you you have to put people in your circle that you trust that are faithful men faithful women faithful in the word of god but also faithful to the ministries of the local church but also faithful uh, to uh, the community of of believers so timothy is instructed to place men and women in his circle that he could trust but also those that could teach right you just don't want someone just standing up in the front of the church would not be without the ability um to teach there are certain uh, there are certain positions in the church where that person or the, that group of people they have to be there is a must that they are qualified um to teach so so it takes courage and it's hard work to teach and and, and not everybody can teach right and, and and that's the problem you know people want position but they don't want to teach right it's hard work it takes courage to teach it's hard work to teach the word of god and this is why paul he's instructing timothy to teach men and women who he could trust that they would actually do the work, study the word, you know, peel back the layers, understand um, the word. Because the ability to study, understand, and teach the word of God, watch this, it's a gift from God. It is a gift of God's grace. This is why not everyone is qualified um, to teach and not everyone is qualified to be in particular um, um you know ministries right so 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 when i was a deacon at columbia baptist church this was well before um i um became a minister right and i and i just love um hearing the word of god regardless of who was preaching but there were some times that i that, that i was like i i don't get this and so so at the time i was working in quantico and and, and um and i drove to quantico like every day um, you know commuted i commuted every day but on this particular Sunday after service, I packed my stuff and I just went and I drove to Fredericksburg because because the, because God had put it on my heart just to get away. Right. So so I drove to Fredericksburg um, and I checked in a hotel and the purpose for driving, the purpose for checking in the hotel was not so that I could get away from home. It was because I had I needed a one on one with God pertaining to his word i checked in the hotel i opened up the bible i prayed to the lord and i said and and i asked god i said god um i want to understand your word and believe it or not beloved from that moment forward the word of god it just opened up because prior to asking god for his wisdom his divine wisdom I was just reading the Bible as like I was reading a book, right? But God gave me the understanding, studying, understanding, and teaching the word of God. It is a gift from God, and not everyone is capable or has been sanctioned by the Holy Spirit um, to do it. Because Paul, 
He, he tells Timothy, you, you, have to, you have to make sure that you are getting qualified people because he even, tell, he even talks about this in 1 Timothy chapter, two verse, ch chapter 3, verse 2. He says, therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable. But this is what he says. This is what he says, hospitable, but also they must be able to preach, right? Yeah, you can sing a good song, but... Can you teach, right? The qualifications is to teach and not to preach, right? Good teaching is great preaching. To teach in the preaching is work. It takes time. This is why all pastors, I believe all pastors should be full time, right? Because because the majority of the pastors that I know, right, the circle of the pastors that I know, you know, they are they are bivocational. You know, they're working just like the people sitting out in the pews, you know, so they you, you know, so they're finding time, um, finding time to get before the Lord and pray um, for divine direction for a uh, um, for the upcoming Sunday Sunday and preparing for uh, the Bible studies. Right. It takes work. Right. And you just can't get it all together in in one hour. It takes um, work. Um, so, so so picking up in verse three, Paul also tells Timothy he's encouraging him. He says, listen, Timothy, because remember earlier last week, we said, you know, Paul was telling Timothy, Timothy, don't give up. So he tells he, he encourages Timothy, you know, just remember what I taught you. Make sure you put good, wholesome people around you. Right. Because he, I have to say this, because if you put the wrong people in, in your circle, in your ministry, they will drain you, right? They, they, they will cause you to falter because they're not helping you. They're not edifying you, right? So Paul says you have to also share in the suffering as a what? Good soldier. In other words, Paul is telling Timothy, he says this, you have to learn how to endure hardships, dude. Y you know, b b because being in the ministry is, is not easy, right? Pastoring is not easy, right? I know from the outside, you know, from the outside looking in, it just looks, you know, so easy, you know, but, but, but it's not. It's just like a professor, you know, just a high school teacher. That, you know, that stuff is not easy. It took hard work, you know. You know, the sister or the brother just didn't wake up one day and say, you know what, hmm, I want to be a, pre uh, you know, a teacher in high school. No, they had to do the work. They had to get through high school. They had to go to college. It was work. And some people, they make the mistake of going into the ministry, becoming a deacon for deacon or, or deacon or um, minister of the gospel for the wrong reasons. Because, see, it takes perseverance, perseverance perseverance to minister and to teach folk when you know when you know that sometimes you just don't even feel like doing it yourself it it it, it takes work because see sometimes you have to you know it's like hey you know what man i smell the barbecue you know i know there's you know i know that there's something going on but oh my god man i got to get ready i got to get ready for tomorrow because you know you know the people they're going to be waiting for you know for a word from the lord it takes work it takes work and you just can't show up on sundays that is that is not enough there there, there is preparation before sunday comes right Paul, Paul even tells, Paul even writes to the church in Ephesians and encourages them because he tells them, hey, listen here, you have to be what? Strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You have to be strong, not on your own accord, not in your own strength, not in your own intellect. He says, but you have to be strong in the Lord and in the power of of God. And he says, he says, you have to be careful pastors. You have to be careful preachers. You have to be careful elders and bishops. He says, because you have to put on what the whole armor of God so that you can what, so that you can take what the devil is putting on you. Right. You, you, you can't give up just because you, you know, just because you have all of these fiery darts, you know, coming your way, you know, all of the chatter and all of, you know, no, you cannot give up. 
You, can, you can't give up, right? And, 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 you know, and I've been pastor for quite some time now, and I can, you know, I can give you some hard stories about being a pastor. I, I, I can, you know, I can tell you about coming out of the church and going outside to my car, and it was, and it was like $5,000 of damage done to it by, by a church person, right? I, I can tell you all of that, but you know what? It did not cause me to give up and quit. Matter of fact, it caused me to roll up my sleeves even the more and fight a good fight of faith. And this is what you have to drop in your spirit is that because see, Satan is out there trying to stop you, block you and keep you from doing, keep you from doing ministry. And I'm just not, and I'm not talking just about preachers. I'm talking about the ushers. I'm talking about people that are singing in the choirs. I'm talking about people that come just to worship God. You can't let people cause you to give up. Pastors, they do more than to, you know, prepare sermons. We pray for the people. We show up at the, at the door steps, right? We, you, you, know, you know, we do more than what we do on Sundays. And when families are going through, we, we, we put up with people's misunderstanding of, of, our, of our intents. And, of course, we have to put up with, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes we have to put up with the negative chatter of people. And normally that chatter is never the people that are coming Sunday after Sunday supporting the church in in the physical and also supporting the church uh, financially it's always the people that are outside never supporting never showing up but you know just to chatter you know but, but pastors 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 you know they they, they go they go be beyond beyond because i remember there was a young sister that that had passed away she was connected to the church right and uh she passed away and there was no way that i could talk to her her husband on the phone the brother, he lived in D.C. They lived in, you know, they lived in Maryland, just outside of D.C. So what did I do? I, I got in my car and I drove up there just to be with him for about 45 minutes. Then I drove back home. It is work. It's not just for Sundays. Paul picks up in verse 4 and because Paul is on this being a good soldier kick now to Timothy, and he, use, he uses the military um, as the illustration for Timothy. Because Paul tells Timothy, he says, no one that serves in the military or serves as a soldier, they get entangled in the, in the civilian affairs, but rather they try to please their commanding officer, Right? I served in the U United States Marine Corps for 20 years, and for the 20 years that I served on active duty, my, my service, my assignment, whatever capacity I was assigned to was the mission, right? If I was, if I was, if I was halfway around the world on a ship, six months on a ship, or in Okinawa, Japan for, a, for an entire year, I could not be getting wrapped up and and being concerned, be, being totally concerned with you know what was going what was going on back home, because I had an assignment to take care of, right? Whether it was in Okinawa, Japan, you know, being a drill instructor at Paris Island, teaching teaching the midshipmen at the NRTC units at UNC Chapel Hill or Duke University, I had to I had to focus on my assignment and on. The mission, right? And I just believe that too many people, you know, they don't focus. They let what's what's going on in the world pull them and they get entangled in civilian affairs, right? My assignment was teaching the Marines that I was entrusted to. My assignment as a pastor is preaching the gospel teaching the word of God to the people that God has entrusted to me. And I can't be concerned about what the latest fad is in the civilian side of life. I have to be well informed, but I can't transform or be, be conformed to the world so that I can fit into the ministry because people in because people in the pews want the world more than they want the gospel because i have been sanctioned what to uphold the customs and the courtesies of 
When I was in the military, I was I, I, I was I was sanctioned to uphold the customs and the courtesies of the Marine Corps, right? And the same thing goes for being a pastor. I have been called by God. Pastors have been called by God. What sanctioned to uphold the word of God. Now, when it comes to the world, G Jesus even Jesus even says in John seventeen, he said, Jesus even even prays for for his disciples. He says he says he says Father, I pray that you don't take them out of the world, right? So Christians are not called to be taken out of the world, but we have power so that we can succeed and thrive in the world. So Jesus, he prayed for us that we would be, be capable of doing ministry in the world and that anything that the devil threw our way, God has already taken care of it because this is a prayer that Jesus prayed. And Jesus says, we are not of the world because Jesus says, I'm not of the world. So picking up again in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, Paul says, and, and, and similarly, anyone who competes. So, so now he shifts from um, being in the military to being an athlete. So Paul says, Timothy, you have to be just like, you know, athletes. He says, he says, you, you, you can't, you cannot, you cannot get the reward if you quit. That's basically what he is telling Timothy. Timothy, do not quit. It would not make any sense to work hard all of your, all of your life and become disqualified. In high school, I was a, I was a two-miler. Right? Well, at least I attempted to be a two-miler. You know, you know, I sucked in track, okay? I, I sucked. I was always... I was always being laughed, you know, uh, I, I was just a runt, but I was, I was, I was having fun, but you know what? I never quit the, the, those eight laps. I, you know what? I completed the eight laps, but the thing about it is, is that the person who, the person who would, who, who would come out victorious, like my good friend, um, Bill Jackson, right? What if Bill would have, um, did something that went against the rules of track, right? And he ran the eight, the, you know, the, the 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 eight laps, right? Finished up his nine minute plus, right? Did all of that hard work, sweating, and everybody's cheering him on the side. But you know what? Ref says no. The official says no. On lap number two. You did something that makes you disqualified. Paul writes to the church in Corinth and he says, but I, dis I discipline my body, Paul says. Paul, Paul says, I go beyond, beyond so that I will not be disqualified. Because this life that we live as Christians, right? You know what? It is not a walk in the park. There are things out there that are catching your eyes, your ears, right? And and there are all kinds of all sorts of traps out there, right? And Paul says, I discipline my body and I keep my body under control so that after I'm preaching to other people, I will not be disqualified. Jesus even said that many will say in this in that day, Lord, Lord, did I not prophesy in your name? Did I not drive demons out in your name? Did I not perform many miracles in your name? And Jesus, he says in verse 23, he says, yeah, 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 you did all of that. But he says, but you were disqualified. Paul picks up again in verse two, as you were in verse six, chapter two. Then Paul uses the hardworking farmer to Timothy. And he said, Timothy, he says, I just want to encourage you because I want you to know that, that, that yes, you deserve the first fruits of the crops if you are a hard worker. 
So Paul is telling Timothy, he says, listen, Timothy, you cannot be a slacker. You know, you cannot get up in, you, you cannot do a 10 minute, a, a, a 10 minute sermon and, and five minutes of it is hooping and no one got anything out of it. And then you expect something out, it, you know, at the end. He, he says a hardworking farmer who ought to have, ought to have the first share of fruits. Paul is, Paul is teaching Timothy that if you put in the work, then yes, you should reap the benefits and Faithful pastors should be supported by the church and reap the benefits if they are working or doing the work. Because Jesus says a laborer is worthy of his hire. That's what Jesus says. That's what not, I'm not saying that that is what Jesus said in the gospel. Picking up in verse 7, Paul, he says all of the things that um, prefaces verse 7 Paul says, all of this that I have, that I have taught you. He says, think about it. Think, think it over. You don't, you don't have to take my word for it, but just think this thing over. Because when you think, when, when you meditate on this, the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Think about it. He's not pushing Timothy to react, but he's telling Timothy, meditate on what I've said, right? And sometimes after Bible study or after, you know, the Sunday service, you know, maybe it would be a good thing sometimes if you just meditate on a couple things in the sermon that maybe it bothered you. Just meditate on what was, what was preached. Read, 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 read and reread that scripture. And I guarantee you just one thing. The Lord will give you the understanding. Paul says in verse 8, he says, remember Jesus Christ. Here, here is the encouraging piece. He says, remember Jesus Christ risen from the dead, the offspring of David as preached in my gospel. Right? Paul, he encourages Timothy. He says, Timothy, he says, he, he says, I want to encourage you because you're not the only one that's suffering. He says, Jesus Christ suffered, but he was risen from the dead, right? And, 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 and Paul is setting it up because Paul is saying, essentially, he says, he says, this is the reason that I'm bound in, that I'm bound in chains. He says, for I am suffering also, Timothy. He says, but I am bound in chains as a criminal. And sometimes... We, we become so discouraged with not even know, well, without even realizing that there are people who are going through more than we would ever do. And Paul says, I'm, Paul, Paul says, be encouraged, Timothy, because I'm holding on. I, I'm holding on to the promises of God. I'm, I, I'm holding on by faith. You know, I'm not walking by sight. I'm not walking by what I hear. I'm not walking by what I feel. I'm, I'm walking by faith. This is the substance of, of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. There is nothing that a person can do that can stop the word. Because Paul says in the latter portion of chapter, ch chapter 2, verse 9, Paul says, he says, I'm suffering. I'm bound. They're treating me, you know, like a common criminal. But he says, but the reality is this. He says, he tells Tim Timothy, whatever you go through, he says, whatever people put, whatever put people put in your way, he says, I can guarantee you this one thing. The word of God is not bound. You may be bound, but the word of God may, will, will not be bound. There's nothing that a person can do to stop the word of God from going forward. They may slow the preachers down. They may hinder the preachers, the pastors for a hot minute. But what they cannot do is hinder the word of God. Let me prove it to you in the text. Isaiah chapter 55 and 11 says, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return void to me, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing in which I have sent. In other words, 
whatever the, the, the word of God, when it goes forth from that evangelist mouth, from that bishop's mouth, from that prophet's mouth, where, what, you know, it, ha- you know, your feelings, another person's feelings cannot stop it nor hinder it because if it's from God, it will not come back void. So Paul says in verse 10, he writes in verse 10, he says, therefore, I endure everything. So Paul says, because of the gospel, I'm in chains, but the word of God is going forward. He's incurring, encouraging Timothy to stay focused on the gospel, to share in the suffering, to not give up. And here's the purpose behind Paul's call in ministry. And he never forgot it. Because Paul says, therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect. That they also may obtain salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Paul uses his situation as a means to let Timothy understand that the call is not about the individual but that the call is so much greater. It is about the people. And if we give up in the pulpits, then who is going to teach the people to obtain salvation? Like I said Sunday, that we are, the church is a soul-saving station. And this thing, in, in the call to the ministry, right, or, you know, or being just, just, you know, evangelist or being a missionary, what, what, whatever that ministry may be, right? It's, it's not about me, right? And I can't give up just because, I, you know, my feelings get hurt, right? Yeah, my feelings get hurt sometimes, but you know what? I have to keep on for the people, right? So that they can obtain salvation. Why do you think people in ministry catch so much hell? Is because Satan doesn't want people to obtain salvation that is in Jesus Christ, right? That's why it, 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 it is not about the people because the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in high places, right? We deal on a daily basis with, with, with the spiritual wickedness, you know, and, and pastors, elders, you know, uh, you know, evangelists, you know, whatever, whatever your position is, deacons, you know, you know, pull up your big boy pants and just, and just fight the good fight of faith, right? It is not about how we feel. You can't give up just because, you know, someone, someone hurts your feelings, right? You, you know, that's what the world does. You know, you, you, you know, that's what we Christians do. You know, you know, someone doesn't speak to a Christian and guess what? And they leave. Well, they didn't speak to me. You know what? Get over it. Because what we do is so much greater than us. And this thing is not just for preachers. It is for everyone that has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. All of us have been assigned to help people obtain the salvation that is in Jesus Christ. And then Paul picks up in verse, verse 11. Paul says, this is a faithful saying. For if we died with him... We also live with him. Paul tells Timothy, he says, if you crucified your flesh with Christ, then even whatever situation you find yourself in, you ought to, you, you ought to see yourself in, in heavenly places that you're living with him, right? Because Jesus said that he would what, never, never leave us nor, nor forsake us. We are living with him, and if we go, you know, if we went through all of that, we got, you know, we, we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, you know, and we believe in the heart that God raised him from the dead, we, we are saved. If, if we believe all of that, then we also have to believe that we are living 
in him. So Paul says, if we endure, he tells Timothy, if you don't quit, you will also reign with him. Verse 11 says, if you crucify, you'll live with him. But if you don't quit, if you just get through the crucibles of life, you will also be with him. If we deny him, and Paul says this to Timothy, if you quit, if you quit, he also will deny us. He tells Timothy, you have to have a faithful staying power. Don't give up. And this is what this, this is what, you know, the, the, the second letter to Timothy is all about. The first letter to Timothy was all about uh, getting things in order for the church. But this time it's about Timothy is burning out. And Paul heard that Timothy is burning out. And Paul is telling Timothy, come on, Timothy, come on, bro. Don't quit. Don't quit. Endure. Jesus says they that endure shall receive or, or they that endure will receive or shall be saved. Right. But he says, if you quit, if you deny him, God would also deny us staying power. Jesus even says in John chapter 15, verse five, he says that I am divine. You are the branches. If you stay with me, if you do not deny me, I won't deny you. I will. If you remain in me, I will remain, remain in you. You will bear much fruit if you don't quit. And the reason why people don't have those spiritual gifts is because they quit. You cannot bear, you cannot bear fruit as a Christian when you have fallen out of fellowship and, and no one has seen no hide nor hair of you in 30 years or since your baptism, there is no fruit. And we got to, you know, we got to stop preaching all these cute sermons, making people feel good because Jesus says, listen, if you remain in me, I will remain in you. And if you remain in me, I will give you fruit because he says, because apart from me, you can't do anything. I know you get, I know that people, they shout on, you know, that, you know, the Lord will never leave us nor forsake us. But Jesus says, you have to remain in him. Paul says, you cannot deny him because watch this. It doesn't matter what we do. Nothing we do changes God. It's in the text. Paul tells Timothy, Timothy, if you're unfaithful, God is still going to, God is still going to be God. God, God. God is still going to be sitting up high and looking down low. God is not going to get in his feelings because you walked out. God is faith. If we are faithless, he remains faithful because God is not going to be like us because God cannot disown himself. We can disown God, but what God won't do is follow suit and do that which we have done because God is going to be God. His word is going to go forth so you can walk away. You, you, you can quit. You can keep bouncing from church to church. You can be faithless, but God will be faithful. He's telling Timothy that even in the moments of your doubt, Timothy, God, God is still faithful towards you. You know, you know, you know, some, you, you know, one of my favorite verses is this is, uh, Romans chapter eight, verse one, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And this is a writing of Paul. Paul writes to the church and he, and he, t and he encourages them also because he says, you, you, you have to stop 
feeling bad about yourself. You, you have to stop being faithless because if you're in Jesus Christ, God is going to reward you. He's not going to, God is not going to quit on you, right? Even if, even if you drop bottom, you know, a man that falls seven times, God lifts us back up again, right? We should never put our faith with him. What he's doing is, is that, you know, Paul, over all of this, he says, Timothy, we should never put our faith in our faith or our feelings. See, that's the problem. We put our faith in our faith and we put our faith in our feelings. And if either one go, goes wrong, we feel that God is going to do, walk away from us. Even, even at the lowest echelon of life, God will be faithful against you because you'll fail every time if you don't put your trust in. In God, trust in the Lord with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. Don't be keep leaning into your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge God when you're going through the worst day of your life. Acknowledge God. He will show you how to get through it. Paul picks up in verse 14. We're almost there. He says, he says, remind them of these things also. So Paul says, don't keep all of this to yourself. He's, he says, let other people know about this letter, these no golden nuggets that I'm writing to you. And he says, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit to the ruin of the hearers. If, if you were with us um, in 1 Timothy, uh, you, 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 you will begin to see that, that you, you, you can, when, when you hear this, you will know that this is Paul that's writing this. Because Paul keeps, you know, reiterating to Timothy to not get caught up in vain conversations. You know, people asking you questions about, you know, the Bible that does not even make any sense. Paul says, you just you keep, keep, keep on walking because the Bible says don't, you know, don't even show your, you know, your teeth to the, you know, the swine, you know, your pearls before the swine, Right. Because all they're going to do is just, you know, take the words that you have given them and turn it against you, right? So, so we're going to close out with um, verse um, 15. This is a very familiar passage of Scripture, and I put the, um, the King James Version up um, on tonight because this is what um, most church folk or the older generation, um, you know, grew, grew up on. And, and when I say this, you know, you know they're going to they're gonna know exactly what I'm saying, you know. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Cannot mess with your heads and your theology just for a moment. I want to, I just want to mess with your theology. Because in the church, we always were taught to study to show ourselves approved unto God, right? Preachers preach their initial sermons, and, and you have people um, encouraging them to make sure you get into the Word of God and study the, study the Word of God so that you will not be um, ashamed, that, that you will be uh, approved unto God. Study the, the, the Bible. That's what we have been taught but that is not what Paul was telling Timothy text if you want because the word study in the Greek has nothing to do with books and teachers and reading scripture the Greek word for study simply means, and this is what he tells Timothy, and we're closing on this. He says, Timothy, he says, be diligent, be zealous, and give, and give your ministry everything that you got. Because when you're diligent and you're zealous and you're giving it, you're all in the ministry, you're approved unto God. 
Because, see, we can know the scripture and know it from generation, not generation, generation, uh, Genesis to Revelation and not be approved of God. But he says, but the one thing that catches God's eye is when we are diligent. Because when we are diligent, zealous, and giving it our all, that means that that means that we'll never give up and we'll never quit. You know what? You know why people quit. Most folk quit in the ministry, or you know, members sometimes they just walk out. You know, they just they get upset about something and they walk out. You know why they walk out? It is because they have not invested anything in the ministry. They have not invested anything in their local church, right? Whether they're being their presence, you know, their, their presence or helping the church out financially. Yeah. So, of course, when you're not when, when you're not um, diligent, when you're not zealous, when you're not doing anything, when you're not when you have not supported anything. Yes, it is easy to walk away because you haven't invested anything but i want to encourage all of the preachers and all of the especially the the pastors out there that you know that the, the pastors you know you, you you may be you know you may be struggling right now but if you have invested if you have if you have been diligent towards your call then you're showing yourself approved unto god because you are a workman a workman that will not be ashamed because you know how to rightly divide the word of God. God bless you on tonight. I just want to thank you again for just visit, being with us um, on tonight with the Mount Marine Baptist Church Tuesday night table talk. We will be picking up next week, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Two, and I'm going to pick up again with chap with verse um, 15, and we will get through um, the remaining of chapter two um, next Tuesday. God bless you, and thank you so much again, Father. We thank you, Lord God, and bless.